mean, how, what are we gonna do with Library of City? Or Library of City. Hey guys, it's Maggie, and today I am talking about my thoughts and feelings on the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children movie. Miss Peregrine's came out two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, I believe, and basically, we are going to discuss it together. I gave it an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it, but I did have some major issues, which like I feel if I'll go into it in more detail, but basically this is going to have spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, you should probably leave. But after you guys see the movie and read the book, you guys can come back and we can all discuss it. I'm going to first start with the pros because I want to like, I mean there was so much of the movie that I did enjoy that I want to talk about before I jump into about what I did not like. I have notes here. I'm so proud of myself. I like made notes of like a pros and cons list. Like I never do that for videos. I just like rant. So now this is the first video that I actually have like things to say. So here we go. For pros, I thought the aesthetic of the movie was really good. Like it really built into the whole creepy vibe, like especially in the house and on the island in Florida where Jacob lived, not so much. That was kind of very random, but I did like the distinction between like Florida and his regular life and the peculiar life, so I really liked how they did that. I really loved the opening credits and it like pulled everyone into the creepy-ish world and the music was really amazing. The soundtrack was actually brilliant. I did have some issues with where some of the music was placed, but I really did overall like really enjoy the soundtrack, especially in the beginning. I really loved the island scenery. It was like, I mean, I know it's a very small island um, in the book, but it just, it felt so dark and creepy and like the clouds and there was no sunlight. It was very, very cloudy there, which is like my favorite type of weather. So maybe that's why I really enjoyed it, but I thought that was really good. The house in like 2016 was amazing. Like how they did it, all the creepiness and how they, I'm surprised so much standing after the bomb like dropped on it in 1943 but like everything was destroyed and dark and plants were growing on it because it had been so long so I thought that was really good and I thought the way they introduced the peculiars and Jacob like to Jacob was really great like when the twins popped out I literally screamed in the theater and like jumped onto my best friend the house in the loop I really loved the interior design of it and like how it had that really cute like staircase and everything and it just seemed very like nice and it's just it seemed so happy and nice there. I loved the kids the way they showed the kids cute like their powers basically like I loved the part where Fiona like grows this giant carrot for dinner and like you think it's gonna be like a carrot like okay a big carrot but no it's like this giant carrot and then you have little Bronwyn who comes in and just like drags the carrot because she's super strength but it's like the cutest thing and I thought that was really great I know they like aged a lot of the characters up and everything but I thought Overall, it was pretty good, but the little ones were mostly my favorite. Victor was terrifying, like way more scary, scared than in the books. Like I knew, like his story in the book, they lived in the attic. Like I knew he was dead, and they brought him back to life. But still, it was like terrifying. His eyes, and was like, he was like, "Hi, Jacob. Do you want to hear the story of how I died?" And I was like, "Not really. No. Like, oh my god." I thought Eva Green was a really amazing Miss Peregrine. In the books, I always pictured her as older, and I know a lot of people talked about that, but I think she did really well, and I thought honestly that she was an amazing actress that um, portrayed Miss Peregrine pretty much exactly how I envisioned her. She was just a lot younger. Jacob's dad was much more of a, like a comedic relief than he was in the books. I really wanted to see the scene where Jacob brings Olive, Emma, and I want to say Millard. And I forgot who else to like meet his dad at the end of the book and like they freak him out like I thought that was I really wanted to see that in the movie that would have been hilarious but they didn't include it and I'm so mad that is basically all of my pros and basically all the cons if the cons weren't there I feel like this movie could have been a 10 out of 10 because it was sticking so well to the books it was sticking almost exactly and then the last 45 minutes just ruined it and I am still not happy with the changes. I know a lot of people are and like I feel like as an alternate universe this was great. Like I really liked the ending. Like it was funny and fun but it's not what happened in the books and so that's like my biggest issue because it went so far. They almost Percy Jackson did. Like and I feel like that's so horrible to say because nothing is as bad as Percy Jackson but like this was really 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 far out there. How are we gonna incorporate Hollow City into this? What's gonna happen? Like, I really need to know. They have Miss Peregrine. She's back with them. How are they gonna 
Like, how are they gonna do that? I also didn't see the point in switching Emma and Olive's peculiar, like, powers. Like, I didn't see the point of that. I thought they could have kept Emma with the fire and Olive flying. Like, I thought that would have been great. Not really sure why they switched it, but, you know, it happened. I did think the beginning was really awkward and rushed. I think they did that because they wanted to get so much explained in the world of the Peculiars, but it just felt really awkward in the beginning, but like as, it, as the movie went on, it, it got better. Why did his grandpa come back? That's like my biggest issue. The ending and his grandpa comes back because the time loop and then Jacob just casually goes into 1943 to reunite with them. That's not what happened in the books. I mean, in Hollow City, here's a spoiler for Hollow City, so I can do this if you don't want to hear Hollow City spoilers. He calls his parents or something and they're like, we're in London, where are you? Or something like that. And he's like, I'm in London, just not like in the, I forgot how it happens. He casually goes into 1943 and finds Emma and like stays with her forever. And I'm like, what? Like, you just disappeared. Your whole parent, your parents are going to think you're dead. Like, how does his mom, his poor, like, how does his parent, like, what? And his grandpa came back? Like, I, I don't understand the ending and why they did that. But overall, it would have been a 10 out of 10 had it ended right. Or if they just stopped it at the ship, that would have been, you know, fine. And how is Hollow City gonna happen? Like, are they gonna make Hollow City? Like, did they not think they'd make Hollow City? Like, what if they make enough money for Hollow City? What What's gonna happen? Those are my thoughts on the Mr. Harrigan's movie. I gave it 8 out of 10 because I thought it was done really well with the exception of the ending. So yeah, thanks so much for watching guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye!